Okay, so I wanted to make a quick video for you guys to just explain and demonstrate a little bit how to go about doing this word art thing. Um, what I did here was I, I uh, drew a dolphin, notice the size of it. Dolphin uh, classics, been much, much used. I've seen many, many dolphins in many, many different projects over the years in my career as an art teacher. And I thought I'd use it. Um, I thought it was a, gr uh, a good word to use to spell out the shape of, of the subject, the dolphin, because there's a lot of letters there. And I wanted to show you how this can work and how you should go about thinking about it. So uh, you'll also notice I have some extra stuff, some extra visuals here. That's a really good idea. It adds another visual element, adds another, adds more detail, and it kind of puts my dolphin in a context. Even though these are just a couple of abstract wavy kind of wave shapes, they still, it places my dolphin in some type of context. And it looks good, so I did that. Um, I'll talk about those more in one sec, but first of all, uh, I drew out an outline of my dolphin, just a silhouette. Notice there's no eye on the dolphin, although there could be. There's no eye on the dolphin, but there's definitely no other detail. Um, if this was another animal, perhaps, uh, I don't know, a dog, um, I would not want to try to draw fur, a hair on my dog. Um, I'm not going to do any shading. So it's a, it's a, it's all it is is a silhouette, a simple outline of whatever subject that you choose. Then um, I started going about lightly. I darkened this so you could see it after I got it right. And it took me a couple of few tries here with some erasing. I don't know if you can see the eraser marks on here, but there are many. Um, so I, I, I made a conscious effort to draw lightly. I'm a really dark drawer. So whenever I'm trying to draw something out that I know I'm gonna have to fix and alter, I have to make a conscious effort to draw lightly. So after I, um, well, I started out playing with the letters and I, I, I started drawing them out. And the key with the whole project is warping, smooshing, stretching out and distorting your letters so they take up as much space within your silhouette as possible with a minimum amount of negative space. Negative space is the space between the letters and inside the letters, right? There has to be some because they're letters, but um, a minim you're, we're trying to do the very best we can to minimize the amount of negative space. So I started on the tail with the D. Notice my D right off the bat does not look like a D. It's very distorted. It fills up the entire tail. So um, really, actually, that was kind of the easiest one in a sense um, because all I had to do was draw the curvy part of my D here. The rest of it is over here. It's a D, it's a D, but it's a very strange looking and distorted D. And then this is gonna be the hole inside my D. It's not a D unless you have a hole inside there. So eventually I would be cutting this out. So that gets cut away. And then I went on to the O. Um, I bent the, the side of the O around to kind of fit the curve of the D there. The top and bottom of my O border, this is important, it borders um, the top and bottom of my dolphin outline. All the letters do that. If they don't, well, you'll see what happens in a sec here, but if they don't, it, it doesn't work. It, it will, when, when, when you get rid of the rest of whatever outline is left over, the letters will not define the shape of the object unless the letters border um, all any part of the object that they can touch, they should touch. So I drew an O, that was pretty easy too, actually. I did have to play with size as I was drawing this out. My O here, you probably can't see the line, but there was a line here where my O was a lot smaller. And as I drew it out, I realized that I needed to make, I had to go back and erase and make the O bigger. I, I had to work a lot with the spacing. It took me several tries. So L, as you can see, notice what I do with the L. Instead of making my L straight up and down like this, like an L looks, we, when we think of letters, we think of writing. We're not writing here, we're drawing. Drawing letters and writing letters are very different. So um, I couldn't do, all I could do that, but that would leave me a bunch of negative space, empty space here between the L and the P. So what I did was I stretched the top bar, the vertical part of my L all the way out here. I came back in, you know, and, and you can still tell it's an L. It's just altered. P, I had to, um, I was worried. I was like, how is that P? 
how am I going to make the P fit within the shape of the fin? But it actually, once I started, once I thought about it, it kind of hit me. It, I realized it wasn't that hard. Um, I drew a P. My P is uh, taking up the whole fin. It comes around here. And again, I stretched out the vertical part of my P. Normally, the letter P would be straight up and down like this. But I changed it. So it stretches out and comes very close to the side of the H here, right? So there's my P. Um, and I drew a hole. That's where I'm, I would be just like the D and the O. I'd be cutting this out eventually. That would be cut away. And the H. H is kind of strips bulging out here. It's stretched out and it's doing the same thing here. And my H, the bottom part of my H goes all the way down into my the fin of my dolphin. That bottom fin comes up here. You know, you can pretty much still tell it's an H. Uh, it's just stretched out over here and, and it forms the shape of the fin. Again, this gets cut away. I was easy enough. I put it all my letters as close together as possible. I could probably even go closer here if I wanted to on a couple of these. I could probably... Um, get rid of some more negative space by making a very small gap between the letters. So the I is just a vertical bar. The N was the hardest thing. I had to work with the N. I actually had to draw an N over here, a stick N, so my brain could see what an N looks like, and then take that idea of the stick N and transfer it and distort it and alter it so it fit within the nose of my dolphin. Um, even so, when I when I cut this out, there's going to be a piece missing here. So this brings me to what happens next. After you draw your letters, you're satisfied. You think it looks pretty good and it's gonna work. This is what you should do. Start erasing all parts of your of your silhouette, of your whatever shape you drew, that are not part of the letters. So in other words, in between the letters, I'm gonna erase, I'm gonna erase this and this. Going in here, I'm gonna erase this. And so on, until all I'm looking at are the letters. I've erased as much as I can. And then I have to ask myself, does this still, is this, does this form the shape of, of a dolphin? Does this still look like what I need it to look like? So um, it does, you know, it took, again, it took, a, it took some trial and error, it took some erasing, took some fixing, but it does, you know, still hold the shape and define the shape of the dolphin. And the next step would be to cut these letters out carefully. I take the letters, I glue them on a different color background, or perhaps a white background if I'm working with white paper. At this point, um, before you cut your letters out, if all you have is white paper, you might want to color your letters. Coloring the letters, you know, you can color them alternating colors. Just because it's a dolphin does not mean it has to be gray, right? Does not. If you're doing... Um, I don't know, a tree doesn't mean your tree has to have a brown trunk and a green top. We're not concerned with realistic colors here at all. In fact, we're, it's very stylized. It's a piece of artwork. So, you know, artistic license is the term we use. You use whatever colors you want. So I would cut this out. I would glue it, assemble it by gluing it down on another piece of paper. And then real quick, my wave shapes here. Notice I drew some big shapes that are, you know, they're pretty simple. They're just some curvy, organic looking curves. Um, and then there's two overlapping wave shapes here, but what I had to do is I had to separate them because this is a cut paper design. So notice the separation here and here. This is, this is the beginning of this wavy shape and it continues over here. There's a separation. So when I cut these out, um, they would be one, two, three, Four, four separate pieces of paper that I would reassemble on my dolphin background. And the same thing here, I'm showing a separation, right, between the two shapes. So I can cut them out as two separate shapes and glue them down. So that's it. That's how it's done. You should take your time, of course, as always. Um, challenge yourself, of course, as always. And uh, again, lastly, you're gonna. I want you to do two different word art designs, two different subjects, okay?